a pleasant day to everyone uh, for our today topic. We have introduction to economics and choice in the world of scarcity. So again, I am Miss Jero. So before we discuss about this lesson, I want you to get your notes and pen so that while I am discussing, you do your job to take the notes. Alright, so what is uh, economics? So for me to introduce economics, this is the definition. The study of how humans make decisions in face of scarcity. This can be individual decisions, family decisions, business decisions, or even societal decisions. Once we talk about um, economic, if you look around carefully, you will see that scarcity is the fact of life. So, what is scarcity? Now? Well, scarcity is that um, this is the human wants for goods or services and resources except what is available. So, what are the resources? It can be labor, tools, land, and raw materials are necessary to produce goods and services we want, but they exist. They just exist in limited supply. So, even um, even in time, no, meron na tinatawag na scarcity because we only have 24 hours in a day for us to earn income, to acquire goods and services, even for our leisure time, or even for sleep. So, Kahit ikaw ay mayaman or ikaw ay mahirap, kapare-parehas lang po tayo na merong scarcity when it comes to time. And, okay, next. Let's talk about the division of specialization of labor. So, kailan po ba ito nag-start? So, nag-start to nung nagkaroon ng book. Okay? Si Adam Smith. So, sino po ba si Adam Smith? Siya po yung ating father of modern Economy. Ang title po noon ay The Wealth of uh, in the year of 1776. So many authors had written an economy or economics in centuries before Smith, but he was the he was the first. So before, um, marami po na susulat tungkol sa uh, ekonomiya. Uh, maraming uh, maraming economists na nagsulat ng iba't ibang book regarding the activities in the economy. Pero, si Adam Smith lang ang nagkaroon ng comprehensive way on how to introduce the concept of division of labor. So, dito, okay, ang ginawa niya, sabi niya doon, kailangan daw po ang goods and services na pinuproduce ng, ng isang manggagawa ay nakadepende sa number ng task or the task will be divided okay to the labor na kung saan iba-iba po yung piniperform nilang trabaho instead, gagawin siya ng isang tao okay, so to illustrate division of labor, Smith counted how many tasks went into making anything so in a modern business is divided tasks as well no? kahit sa mga restaurant uh, magkakaiba sila ng trabaho. So, pagpasok mo pa lang sa restaurant, meron ng tinatawag na greeter. So, sino po yung mga greeter? Sila po yung mga staff na kung saan ba't isaya, mag-welcome. So, yun, yun lang yung trabaho nila. And then, pagpasok mo sa restaurant, siya pa upuin ka, meron sa inilapit na server. So, meron na tayong pangalawang uh, labor. Okay? So, siya, mag-aantay siya doon sa o-orderin mo. Next, kapag ka order ka na, kung ano mga order mo is either uh, main course ba yan or dessert yan, after nila makuha yung order mo, ipaprocess na yan sa counter. So, meron na naman tayong cashier. Okay, so, meron na tayong tatlong table. So, si cashier, gagawin niya, uh, itatak niya yung order mo, susuklaan ka niya kung meron kang sukle. So, yan, bibigyan ka niya ng receipt, yun yung trabaho niya. So, after niya mag-pansyon, gagawin yan, syempre ikukol na yan sa kitchen. So, sa kitchen natin, meron tayong mga helper, meron tayong top chef, meron tayong mga show chef. So, iba't ibang klaseng chef. Depende nga doon sa product na ino-offer ni restaurant. 
So kung papapansin ninyo, yung service na napagdaanan mo doon, maraming gumawa para sa'yo. Okay? Kasi hindi po yun kaya ng isang tao. Yan. Bakit? Kasi nga po, sabi po ni Adam Smith, mas nagiging productive or mas nagkakaroon po ng tinatawag na mas kumik- mas uh, mas nalilesen yung time, mas lumalaki yung yung tinatawag natin na income kapag po continuous yung nangyayaring activity sa businesses. Kasi kung isa lang ang gumagawa niyan, automatically, maybe, si, si customer, hindi siya happy. Kasi bago ka pa nakarating sa, bago ka pa nakakain, ang tagal pa lang inantay mo. Kasi nga po, isa lang yung kumikilos. So, yun yung tinatawag natin na division of labor. So, kailan tayo nagkakaroon? Paano natin dinidivide si labor? Siyempre, depende po yun sa kanilang specific task. Kung saan magayon si employee, kung mo siya ilagay. Okay? Bakit po? Kasi, kapag ka, hindi mo siya nilagay doon sa kung saan siya magaling, maybe, hmm, yung salary yung babayad mo sa kanya, maging waste lang. Okay? So, yung tinatawag natin na division of labor. Next. And what is the difference between micro and macroeconomics? So, uh, I know you are used to this topic. However, let, let's just have a recap. So, once we talk about microeconomics, it's, uh, it's focused on the action of individual agents within the economy, like household, workers, and businesses. However, when we talk about macroeconomics, it looks at the economy as a whole. It focuses on the broad issues such as broad production, number of unemployed people, So, ayan, yung mga increase ng prices natin, tinatawag natin ng play, uh, inflation, yung mga batas ng government, so, ayan, yun po yung tinatawag natin na, na macroeconomics. So, itong dalawa na to, hindi po natin sila pwedeng uh, i-separate. Okay? Rather than, let's make them a complementary perspective on the overall subject of economy. Okay? So, dito, um, in microeconomics, ginadetermine natin kung paano daw po nag, nag-budget si household. Kasi, micro, eh, maliit na unit, no? So, ano po may pinaka-maliit na unit, which is the family. So, si family, mas bahay pa lang, pagsawad ng, sino mas magsawad sa inyo, either your mom, your, your father, or ate kuya, yan. Pagtanggap ng sahod, automatically, nakabudget na. Mga babayaran, yan. Ang tawag dyan ay microeconomics. So, dito, uh, the combination of goods and services will best fit their needs and wants, given the budget they have to spend. How do people de- decide whether to work, and if so, whether to work full-time or part-time? How do people decide how much to save for the future, or whether they should borrow to spend beyond their current needs. So, again, microeconomics deals with one entity, or with the small units. So, yung, mag- yung, magkaka- yung, yung effect ng activity na to, eh hindi naman siya magkakaroon ng effect sa buo. Kumbaga, it will not affect the entire economy. Okay? Next, when so talk about macroeconomics naman, this activity deals with this, the entire society. So, in other words, determine how many goods and services nation actually produce. Ilan daw po ba talaga dapat ang uh, in-offer na trabaho sa bansa? Para nga naman po, buwan ba yung ating tinatawag na unemployment rate? So, kung titignan mo yung issue na yun, napakalawak kasi it deals with unemployment. Alright? So, ayan. So in microeconomics din, no? Ah uh, meron ang example din natin diyan is example, nagkaroon ng bago monetary policy. Sabi ng monetary policy, mayroong ah uh, karon ng bagong batas on how to produce money. So dahil nagkaroon ng bagong batas doon, automatically yung mga bangko magkakaroon na sila ng ibang policy. Yung mga nagkakautang, magkakaroon na sila ng ibang policy. Even the financial capital market, magkakaroon na sila ng, ng ibang policy. So, lahat yun, magkakaroon ng dominant effect. 
What else? We also have the fiscal policy or the government policy here in the Philippines. For example, si Duterte, di ba? Nagpano siya na pumirma siya ng bagong batas. So, yung batas na yun, automatically, affect the entire uh, entire nation or the entire Philippines. So, dapat lahat susunod. Kahit ikaw ay nasa Luzon, Visayas, or Mindanao. We need to follow. That's what we call macroeconomics. Ulit, sinabing microeconomics, the effect is just the small entity. It will not affect the entire economy or the entire nations. However, when we talk about microeconomics, it deals with entire activity of economy. Okay, next. In economics also, okay, nagkakaroon tayo ng decision because we follow some theories and models. Ano po ba yung pinagkaiba ng theories and models? Alright. Theory is just a simplified representation of how two or more variables interact with each other. So, the purpose of the theory is to take complex in a real-world issue and simplify it down to its essential. If done well, this enables the uh, analyst to understand the issue and any problem around it. So, if uh, they come up in a good theory, it's very simple enough for us to understand while complex enough to capture the key features of the object or situation you are studying. So, sometimes, no, yung mga ekonomista natin, yung terms na ginagamit nila sa theory ay model. Okay? So, the, strictly speaking, a theory is more abstract representation, while model is more applied and empirical representation. Ulit, pag sinabing teorya, ito daw po ay abstract representation. Ano po yung sinabing, ano ba ibig sabihin ng abstract representation? Ang bagay ito ay summary mode na lamang. Hindi katulad ng uh, model, it's more comprehensive presentation. It's more on applied. Uh, it's more on um, it's more on doing. Okay? Hindi siya katulad ng abstract. Ay, hindi siya katulad ng, ng teorya na kung saan um, ano lang siya, kumbaga, abstract lang, kumbaga, ito lang yung, ito lang yung detalye niya, pero hindi naman siya sa maw na apply Okay? Unlike model, palagi natin siyang na-apply in every activities in our economy. So, we use a model to test theories, but for this course, uh, we will use the term interchangeably. Ibig sabihin, nagbabago. No, depende, yung theory na bago, automatically, yung theory na yon para ma-prove mo yun, gawan mo. Yung paggawa mo na, that's what we call application. So, whatever the application that you are doing, that's what we call model. So, matak mo lang yung, yung, yung sitwasyon na yun doon. So, like for example, um, if you go to mall, no, may mga agent doon na kung saan nagbibigyan pa sila ng mga units, condo, o nagbibenta sila ng bahit lupa. So, makikita mo, may mga model sila. Okay? So, si architect, no, linano niya kung ano itsura ng bahay. So, makikita mo doon. So, yun, ang tawag doon ay model. Okay? Ito yung plinano. Plinano nila, baga pen and paper. That is what they call theory. Nung kanilang, nung binibigyan nila lang ng picture, habang ginagawa nila, ina-apply nila yung theory na yun, nagkaroon tayo ng model. Okay? Nandiyan po. So, yun po yung pinagkaiba ng model and theory. So, to have a good start about the model when it comes to economy, meron po tayong tinatawag na circle of flow diagram. So, dito sa diagram na to, meron tayong two groups who always interact, which is, which are the household and Firms. Firms mean to say businesses, companies, na kung saan nagpo-produce ng goods and services and nagbibenta sa mga consumer. So, ever household, tayo to, tayo yung nagpo-consume, tayo rin yung nagbibigay ng, ano natin, ng manpower natin. No? 
uh, mga businesses. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, ito pong arrow na to, no? A, goods and services. So, si firm, nagpuproduce siya at nagbibenta siya ng goods and services kay household. However, si household, para ma-enjoy niya yung goods, uh, yung goods and services ni firm, siya ay nagpabayad for payment dito sa ating B. Okay? In another way around, si household, para mabuhay siya at mabili niya lahat ng kanyang pangangailangan at makabayad siya ng lahat ng kanyang bills, kailangan niyang magtrabaho sa firm. So, si firm, ang gagawin niya, mabayaran niya yung pinaghirapan ni Levo, which is the salary, wages, and benefits. So, may nag-say, the goods, services, money, umiikot lang kay household and firm. Okay? So, ito yung diagram na yun. Ito yung model na yun na kung saan, in real situation, applicable ito. Next, we also have economic system. Okay, think about what complex system a modern economy is. Sabihin nyo, ano kaya ang isura ng, ng, ano natin, no? ng economic system? Very complex na ba siya sa mga susunod na panahon? It includes all production and goods and services, all buying and selling, and even employment. So, the economic life of every individual is interrelated or least to small extent. With the economic life of thousands or even millions of other individuals who organize and coordinate this system, who ensure that, for example, the number of televisions a society provides in the same amount it needs it and wants, who ensure that the right number of employees work in electronic industry, who ensure that televisions are produced in the best way possible. How does it all get done? There are uh these of so-called organized economy. Okay? So, ito po yung apat na yun. Ito yung tinatawag natin na ways on how economy works. So, let's start with tradition. Ano po ba yung tradition? So, which is the oldest economic system and is used in the part of Asia, Africa, and even in South America? So, in, tradition, uh, in traditional uh, economies, organize their economic affair the way they have already done, which is traditional na. So, yung trabaho, na yung trabaho ni household, example lang dyan, para ako ay mabuhay, ano gagawin ko? Okay? Gagawin ko, ah, magtatanim ako. Kasi, ang problema ko lang naman, paano ako mabuhay sa buong mga hapon? Ayan. So, yung economic system nila, during that time, uh, for me to live, I need to do something for me to eat. Yan, yun yung tinatawag natin na traditional economy. So, because of that tradition, no, yung progress ng kanilang economy, eh, konti lang, walang masyadong development. Okay, next tayo. Next is we also, we also have the command or plan economy. Si plan economy naman, okay, economic effort is devoted to goal passed down from a ruler or ruling class. So, si command uh, economy, uh, ang nagkakaroon ng decision dyan is si government. No? Si government yung nag-decide kung anong ipuproduce, saan ipuproduce, para kanino ipuproduce yung product, magkano ibibenta, Si government lahat ang nag-decide. So, currently, meron pa rin gumagamit nito. Okay, guess who are they? Okay? So, sila po yung mga bansa na kung saan si government lang yung may say sa kung ano mangyayaring activity meron sila. So, sila po ay sila Cuba and North Korea. So, ang kanila pong mga citizen ay walang say kung anong ipoproduce. Kaano? So, yan, activities ng economies. So, wala silang say. So, government lang ang merong say sa lahat. Na magiging activities. Okay, next. Market. Yan. Si market naman, diba? Kabalik ka rin siya ni Kuman. 
land economy. So market is the institution that brings together buyer and seller of goods and or services who may either individual or businesses. So dito nagkakaroon tayo ng exchange. No? In market economy, decision making is decentralized. Market economies are based on private enterprises. So yung, yung, yung economy na ito, nakadepende ito sa mga businesses. So depende kay business kung ano yung nakikita niyang demand, yun yung kanyang isusupply. Yan. Depende kay business kung paano niya isusupply, magkano niya ibibenta, sino mga i-hire niya, magkano ibabayad niya sa mga tao niya. So depende yun kay business. Okay? So yung pinatawag natin na market economy. Okay. Then, ito, ito bago siya. No? Kasi before, ito yung tatlo lang palagi. Yan, sila lang. Hanggang sa lumabas na si mix economy. Bakit? Kasi nangyayari ito. Ano po yung mix economy? This is the combination of command to land economy and the market economy. Sabihin, balance lang sila. Balance lang yung kanilang trade. Or balance lang yung kanilang decision. Example, sabi ni command, sabi ni command, oh, um, sabi ni government, oh, dapat ganito yung, ano ha, dapat ganito yung taxes na babayaran nyo, dapat ganyan, dapat ganito. So, si market economy, ang gagawin niya, ah, ganun, o sige, payagan mo kung magtaas ng presyo. Payagan mo kung uh, yung yung pasawad ko sa tao, hindi ko muna tataasan. Kasi, kailangan kong bayad sa'yo. Okay? So, sila, win-win. No? Sunod yung gusto ni economy, ay, nasunod yung gusto ni government, nasunod din yung gusto ni private enterprise. Okay, then, next, in our lesson 2, which is the choice in the word of scarcity. If you read the syllabi, no? meron tayong uh, example dyan. Siya ay si siya, siya ay si Alfonso. Ayan. Si Alfonso, meron siyang allowance na $10 per week. So, yung $10 na yun, nakadivided lang doon sa kanyang merienda at doon sa kanyang pamasahe pa uwi. Hypothetically, ito yung mga value na. So, sabi dyan, meron siyang iba't ibang choice. Yung choice niya hanggang F. No? So, para lang para lang maano, para lang hindi siya mag-exceed doon sa kanyang allowance. Okay, so, yung una niyang option, pwedeng hindi siya mamasahe, pwedeng maglakad siya, maybe malapit lang, para makabili siya ng maraming merienda. Or, gagawin niya, okay, mas pipiliin niyang bumili, okay, pipili, mas pipiliin niyang bumili ng apat, at sumakay lang ng apat na beses. Bin dalawang araw lang siya mga masahe. Tapos the rest of the days in a week, maglalakad din siya. Or, eto. Kumbaga, nag-half-half na lang siya. Sige, ang gagawin ko, ano na lang, um, apat na araw akong sasakay. Kasi eight, no? Apat na araw akong sasakay. Kasi baka mangyari nito, pagod ako. Pagod at butom. So, meron akong chance magkaroon ng tatong burger at the same time. Makahawi ako ng maaga. So, ayan. May mga choices si Alfonso. Bakit? Kasi hindi siya pwede mag-exceed doon sa kanyang $10 na allowance. Okay? Ito mga choices na to dito lang siya pwedeng pumili. Hindi siya pwedeng mag-exceed na ay 16, tapos dalawa. Why? Kasi nga, $10 lang yung kanyang pera. Yun yung tinatawag natin na budget constraint. Limitado lang kasi. Okay? Next. Opportunity cost. Okay, pag sinabi ng opportunity cost, this is the value of the next best alternative or the cost refers the value of the best organ alternative. So, given the fact that we have uh, the scenario of Alfonso. So, dito, sinasabi lang dyan na 
example, diba? mas, pinila, mas pinili niyang mamasahe araw-araw. Bakit? Kasi iniisip niya, maybe wala naman traffic, pag-uwi ko, kakain din naman ako, aras hindi pa ako pag-uwi maglakad. Okay? So, ano yung na-forga niya? Yung taste nung burger. Okay? Hindi niya natikman to ng buong isang mundo kasi pinili niyang umuwi gamit ang bus. Mas, mas pinili niya mag-transport. Or in other way around, no? Ay, okay lang. Kahit hindi ako, okay lang kahit ano, kahit na maglakad ako kasi marami na ako kasama eh. So, habang naglalakad kami, kumakain kami. Enjoy the company. Parang ganyan. So, ano yung na-forga niya? Yung energy sana niya, no? Na kung saan, limited lang. Kasi pag uwi niya, dahil naglakad siya, malamang food, pagod siya. Hindi siya nakapag, mag-ano na lang siya, kung mag- magpapahinga na naman sa sumayin niya. So, ganun. Pag sinabi natin, opportunity cost, ano yung value nung hindi mo napili? Ano yung, ano yung, ano, ano yung nasayang mo? Maga. Okay? Of not choosing the alternative. Okay, next. We have marginal decision making and this this uh, diminishing marginal utility. So, what is utility? Ut- utility is the term in economics that repairs the total satisfaction received from consuming goods or services. Pwede natin. Ang utility po, ito po yung, yung totality ng na-consume mo. It's either product yun or services yun. It's either food yan. Okay. Ang tawag doon ay utility. Because, um, utility, ibig sabihin, util, quantity. No? Ilan yung utility na nakonsume mo para masatisfy ka? Okay? So, like for example, ito. Itong picture na to. Mapapansin nyo, ano siya, um, nauwaw siya. So, meaning, pag sinabi mo kasing marginal, nadadagdagan. Okay? Margin, kadag. Why? Because you are not yet satisfied. Okay? So, dahil nauuwi, na, nauuwaw siya, ang taas ng kanyang marginal. Sabihin, ay, ang dami kong iinumin. Ito yung kanyang marginal. So, habang siya ay somehow, na naiibsan yung kanyang kuhaw, okay, ano nangyayari sa kanyang utility? Nababawasan. Di ba? Kasi nakakapag-filled in na siya. Or in other way around, ay, hindi pa ako busog. Ano gagawin ko? Meron pa rin ako marginal utility. Ibig sabihin, hindi pa rin ako satisfied. Kailangan ko pa ulit uminom. Yung word na kailangan mo pa ulit, that is what we call marginal. Kailangan mo pang magdagdag ng itinom mo or mag a ka pa. That is marginal. Okay? And then, the time na kung saan, na, medyo nabusog ka na, nabighay ka na. So, ibig sabihin, itong, or, itong mga marginal utilities mo na yan, nag-diminish. Meaning, nababawasan. Bakit? Kasi nga, hindi ka na nauuhaw. Okay? So, parang ganda lang yan. In our graph, oh, nauuhaw ka, ang dami mong nainom. Okay? Eh, meron pa palang natira. Uminom ka ulit. Ito, ito, itong part na to, ang tawag dyan ay marginal. No? Nagdagdag ka pa. Why? Because you are not yet satisfied. Noong time na kung saan, nagkaroon ka na ng satisfaction, na-fulfilled na, no? Nang, nang, ano mo, nang, na-fulfilled na yung, yung satisfaction. So, what will happen? Mag-diminish. Ibig sabihin, mababawasan na siya. Okay? That is the concept of marginal decision making and this, uh, this in, diminishing marginal decision making. Next, we also have the sunk cost. Ano po ito? These are the costs that were incurred in the past and cannot be recovered, should not affect the current uh, decision. Ito po yung mga nagkastos natin na kung saan hindi na natin mara-recover. And ito yung mga factor na kung saan hindi natin, ma, hindi natin magiging basis when it comes to our decision in the future. For example, because of this uh, online class, because of this kind of um, synchronous, asynchronous na meron tayong pinatawag, ikaw, student, ano gagawin mo? You need to buy something, di ba? You need to buy cellphone, you need to buy laptop, you need to buy gadget para makasabay ka sa 
klase. Bumili ka na. We all know that gadgets, nagdudiminish siya. Ibig sabihin na mabawasan ang value niya habang tumatagal. So, yung, yung cellphone mo na yan, ngayon, o yung gadget mo na yan ngayon, in the next five years, iba na po ang value niyan. Ibig sabihin, yung nawalang value sa kanya, yung tinatawag natin na, na yung, difference, yung depreciation cost niyan, yun yung tinatawag natin na sa cost. Diba? Kung ngayon, nabili mo yung phone na yan ng 10,000, in the next five years, hindi na 10,000 ang value niyan. Maybe ang value na lang niyan, 5,000. So, magkala yung naging sakos. 5,000. Bakit? Yun yung nawala na sa iyo. Kung baga, yun yung nagastos mo. Okay? Yun yung nagastos mo nung ah, uh, nung lumipas ang panahon. Okay? Naunawaan. Pagkakitin natin. Isang po, ito po yung mga nagastos natin na kung saan hindi mo na pwedeng ibalik. At ito yung mga nagastos natin na hindi ka pwedeng na hindi ito pwedeng maging basis mo for your future decision. Kasi natapos na siya eh. Napakinabangan mo naman siya. So, ito yung mga gastos na kung saan hindi mo na pwedeng balikan. Because it's already done. Okay? Next is, yeah, comparative advantage. Right? Ano po bang meron sa comparative advantage? So, dito, no? Um, comparative advantage is, um, ano yung advantage mo? Ano yung angat mo? You're going to compare yourself to others. Yan. Kasi tinawag na comparative advantage. Ano yung lamang mo? So, in your example, okay, meron tayong dalawa dyan, which is the country of Brazil and the country of U.S. So, itong dalawang bansa na ito, meron silang tinatawag na comparative advantage. Ano kaya yun? So, let's talk about the two products that they produce. Okay, which is the sugar cane and the wheat. So, yung mess na to, no, ang mas mataas na nag, ang mas mataas na nagproduce ng sugar cane ay si Brazil. Dito naman, ang mataas na nagproduce ng ng wet is si US. Which is, ano naman siya, di ba? Uh, kabalikiran. Okay? Dito naman, mas mababa si wheat. Dito naman, mas mababa si sugar cane. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, ano po yung comparative advantages nila? Ang comparative advantages ni Brazil is sugar cane. Ang comparative advantages ni US is uh, wet. So, dito, ito yung kanyang tinatawag na comparative advantages saan sila mas madai, saan so or, or saan sila mas lamang, okay? So yun po yun. Next trade off, okay? Kailan po nang yari sa trade off? Yan. Di ba kaya di ba kaya nasabi natin? Meron kang comparative advantages. So kanina, no? So yeah. Ang comparative, let's for example, si Brazil. Ang comparative advantage niya ay sugar cane. Pero wala siyang masyado. Well, so anong gagawin niya? Makikipag-trade off ngayon siya kay US. Para mapunan yung pangangailangan niya when it comes to wealth. Same thing with the US. Okay? Ang comparative advantage naman niya is wealth. So, para po mapunan yung pangangailangan ng bansa when it comes to sugar cane, makikipag-trade off ako kay Brazil. Okay? Yung po yung tinatawag natin na trade off. Ano ibig sabihin dyan? It is an exchange where you give up one thing in order to get something else that you are also desired. Alright. And the last is what we call the positive and normative statement. Okay. Unahin po natin si positive. We'll talk about positive. Uh, it describes the word as it is. Positive. Ibig sabihin, yun talaga yung dapat gawin. Okay? Yung statement na yun, that is factual. However, when we talk about normative, it's talk about description, judgment, and also opinion. Yeah. So, we cannot test them since we cannot prove option to be truth or false. They are option based on one value. So, like for example, economists could analyze a proposed subway system in a certain system. So, if 
expected benefits exceed the cost. We include that project is worthy. So that is that is the example of positive statement. O bakit ba tayo kailangan magkaroon ng ganitong project? Kasi para mabilis ang transaction, para mabilis ang transportation. Para yung mga um para yung mga goods natin, no, madali makapunta doon sa ganitong location. That is positive. Ang nakikinaman ay lahat. Yun nga lang, o pag ito yung normative statement, no, nag-iiba na siya. Ay, like for example natin sa normative. Yeah. Other economies argue for extended unemployment compensation during the Great Depression uh, because a rich country like the U.S. should take care of its less fortunate citizens. An example of normative analysis. Okay? Pwede natin, bakit nabi yung normative analysis? Ito po ay based on the value, based on judgment, based on opinion. And sabi, sabi doon sa in-example ko kanina, sa US, lahat daw po ng mga hindi nagtatrabaho sa kanila, dapat matulungan during the Great Depression, nagkaroon ng depression ng kanilang mansa. Bakit? Kasi po, ang US ay kinikilalang ano, rich country. So dapat tulungan niya yung mga less fortunate na citizen. Ay, ganun siya. May judgment. May opinion. Di ba parang katulad sa atin? No? Patutusin nga, parang tayo lang may ayuda eh, if you're going to compare with another country. That is normative statement. No? Kung baga, uh, si, si Philippines, ang ginawa niya, kaysa ma-depress tayong lahat, no? Kaysa, di bali nang mangutang, di bali nang mangutang tayo sa ibang bansa, as long as, ano, makatulong tayo doon sa mga apektado. Okay? Nung pandemic. So, ganun siya. Ganun yung tinatawag natin na normative statement. Kung maga, ito yung reality na nangyayari. Pero kahit ganun, kailangan, meron ko pa rin maibigay. Okay? Kasi that is based on value. Ano yung pinapahalagahan natin? Ha? That money for the people inside the country. So, yun yung, ano, yun yung pinakaiba ng normative and positive statement. Kung sinabi yung positive, wala kang dapat i-argue dyan. Okay, because that is objectively, hindi sabihin, positibo yan. Hindi ka tulad yung normative, kailangan mo pa siyang ilaban. Okay, kailangan may mga debate pa yan, para hanggang sa ma-prove mo na tama yung opinion mo, na tama yung judgment mo. So, yun po yung pinag-aiba ng positive and normative statement. Alright, again, thank you so much for listening. If you have any question, please. Okay, please ask. Huwag po kayong mahihiya to ask. Okay, para po mas lumawak ang inyong learning. Again, thank you so much for listening.